In a world filled with pistol caliber carbines, one will stand above the rest for its ability to make the shooter feel super self-conscious about his upper arm fat. From the studio that brought you an extra large pizza when you were drunk at 2 a.m. Starring No Self-Discipline, the blockbuster event of the summer is Old Lady Arms. Not coming to a theater near you because that shit's gross and your theater's probably closed. Like this? Like this uh, quarantine mullet? Quarantine mullet! Oof. That's nasty. Mm -mm. I don't like it. I don't like it. Today I'm going to give you my thoughts and a long-term review on my CZ Scorpion EVO 3 S1 carving. Fun fact, engineering actually had to stretch the action two inches to fit all the letters of the name on there. It's fucking marketing. I've had this thing for like five or six years, and when I got it, it was actually so new that nobody even made mag carriers for it yet. So when I went to go to my first match, I had to make some out of cardboard and duct tape. And uh really channel my inner arts and crafts teacher on that one. My name's Susan, I'll be your instructor, and today we're gonna explore the wonderful world of paper mache. I'm not gonna bore you guys with technical specs because A, you probably already know them, uh, and B, they don't really matter that much anyway. Plus you could read it online if you wanted to. Uh, I'm gonna get into why I got the gun, what I think about it, uh, who I think it's for, and then also uh, a little bit into the CZ Custom Trigger Pack because I've only seen a couple of videos of it online and I think it's the, uh, the best option for an aftermarket trigger. Before we get into it, if you could please take a second to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, super helpful. And I'm told that if you do this, the patron saint of cheap bulk ammo will come down and anoint you. All right, here are the cliff notes. If you're looking for a great PCC that won't break the bank and is always gonna run, the CZ Scorpion is it, hands down. It makes a great range toy or truck gun or general dick around blaster. Um, I would for sure get one of the pistol variants if your state allows, uh, or just get the full size carbine and SBR it. Uh, the way that I currently have mine set up is the 16 inch carbine. Uh, I've got the factory iron sights co-witness to a burst fast fire three, uh, an Enforce WML, the Paskey Pathfinder grip, and the CZ Custom Shop drop-in trigger group. Uh, and it's great. So that's, if I was gonna run a carbine, that's exactly how I would set it up. Since I'm finally out of California, I'm going to go ahead and sell this carbine, but I'm gonna turn around and buy the pistol version that has the full length fore end, uh, like this carbine does. Uh, then add what would typically be the traditional stock extension with a tail hook, on it, tail hook, pistol stabilizing brace, and then take the flash can off of it that comes on the factory and replace it with a dead air wolfman that is currently in jail. That setup is gonna be the titties. I think it's the perfect setup. Do that. Now, having said all that, if you are looking for a PCC that you're going to use as a platform to run in competitions, don't buy it. We'll talk about that later. Uh, it's not the best competition gun. Great gun for everything else, but if you're making a purpose-built competition gun, don't get it. You can totally shoot it in competitions, but if your only objective is to shoot it in competitions, get something else. So why did I buy this rifle? Very simple. I wanted a center fire carbine that didn't make me trim brass. Done. Simple man, simple needs. That's all I needed. Ergonomics. The ergos are great. I love it. And more importantly, the manual of arms is great. Uh, the ability to lock the bolt back, HK slap it forward. Fuck. Oh. Uh, last round, bolt hold open. The mag release ambidextrous, so both sides, because sometimes I'll strip it from the left side, and if I still have a couple rounds in, I'll actually release it from my trigger finger. That's awesome. Uh, the ambi safety from the factory is awesome. The left side bolt release, if you want that, there's just a ton of options. So the manual of arms is amazing. Um, the ergos are great from the folding stock. It's wonderful, adjustable length of pull, which is huge. Because if you think about it, everybody keeps on taking pictures of these shorter and shorter rifles. And I really hate short lengths of pull. So the ability to stretch it out 
fold it when you don't want it, collapse it if you need to, but actually stretch it out and get a reasonable length of pull. You know, it's, this is 2020. This isn't the early 1900s where we all have polio and rickets and like a median height of five foot one. No, I'm an adult man that needs an adult size stock. So kudos for actually putting a reasonable length of pull on it. Two cons to ergos. And the two cons are the safety, which I do like that it is ambi from the factory, will dig into the big knuckle on your trigger finger. It's identical on both sides, so whether you're left-handed or right-handed, it's gonna dig on this knuckle. Um, you can buy a safety delete for it, or you can just be an American and dribble that bitch off. Zero dollars, five minutes, dribble it off on whatever side you're not gonna use it on. I think they probably have some other safeties. I just dribbled mine off on the right side, and it's great. Um, the second con is the factory pistol grip uh, has got kind of a shallow grip angle so you see yourself it's it's just it's just a, it's just it's kind of you end up doing this a lot which sucks and it's even more pronounced if you've got the stock collapse so the shorter length of pull the more pronounced it's going to be because you're in there a little tighter uh, but that's super easily remedied they've got a bunch of grip options I ended up with the Pasky Pathfinder Pasque however you pronounce it anyway it's like 30 bucks uh, it's a more vertical grip uh, and it's fantastic uh, reliability. This is going to be easy, but don't take it lightly because it means a lot. 100%. I cannot think of a single malfunction that I've had with this gun, and I have fed it all kinds of factory ammo, all kinds of shitty reloads. I've probably got at least five or six thousand rounds through it over five or six years. I've shot it in night matches. I've shot it in the desert. I've shot it in freezing conditions. I've shot it in rain. I haven't cleaned it very much. I've shot it with factory mags. I've shot it with Magpul mags. I have never had a malfunction save one little trigger reset weirdness like I was talking about earlier. And I think that's partially because I tuned the trigger, that CZ Custom Shop trigger incorrectly, and the screw had started to back out because I didn't lock tight it in there. So other than that, it has been 100% reliable, uh, which is great. Magazines. Uh, the magazine design is superb. I've got the factory 20s, factory 30s, and the Magpul 35s. Uh, I haven't had any issues with any of them except for the first batch of magazines that came out from CZ. I think they had like a weird resin that they used. Uh, they, I don't know if they issued a full tilt recall or not, but you would just come out one day and one of the feed lips would just be blown off your mag. Uh, they would send you a prepaid label you drop it in the mail. They send you a new one free of charge. Um, so if you know that you've got an affected date code, CZ takes care of it. They're great. Just call them up and you'll get one out of Kansas city. So magazines, two thumbs up. Is the scorpion accurate? What, what kind of question is that? This is going to be a pistol for 99% of people that has a zero magnification optic and or iron sights on. It's going to be as accurate as you are. Uh, <laughs> I've put this thing on paper maybe twice at 50 yards just to confirm zero after playing around with, uh, with red dot and off a shitty rest with shitty ammo and a zero magnification optic that is three MOA at a hundred yards. And I was shooting this at 50. So the, the dot itself was an inch and a half wide. I was getting between a one to two inch group. Um, and that's with not the greatest of everything. Like most guns that you're going to shoot fast and offhand, uh, the gun will outshoot you and the intrinsic accuracy of this firearm is not going to be your limiting factor. So I will go ahead and say that it is as accurate as you need it to be. It's time to talk about the elephant in the room. And I do mean elephant because a standard elephant is the exact same weight as the stock CZ Scorpion trigger. <laughs> I'm going to get murdered by some Czech engineer. Um, in all seriousness though, the stock trigger is heavy, mushy, and just generally disappointing. Like your wife. So now that I've sufficiently pissed everybody off, uh, let's talk about your replacement trigger options. You have three options. Option number one is a replacement trigger, and I just mean the actual physical trigger itself. Largely cosmetic, you can get a flat face, a lot of people like that, that's fine. Uh, option number two is a reduced weight trigger spring. Now we're getting somewhere, all right. Uh, and option number three is the CZ Custom Drop-In Trigger Pack, which is what I went with. Uh, there's technically also an option four, which is, uh, I think it's Franklin. Somebody makes a, a binary trigger, but that's a whole nother ball of wax that I'm not gonna get into on this one because I've never shot one. So let's hop back to option one and two, which is a flat face trigger and a reduced weight trigger spring. Uh, that's what one of my buddies did right after he got his. It's a fairly inexpensive modification, pretty easy to do. 
uh, and it felt exactly like somebody put a flat face trigger and a reduced weight trigger spring on a very long, gross, heavy trigger pull. Um, it was lighter, it was definitely lighter, but it was still a long, gross trigger pull. Uh, it would be like if you put lipstick on a pig, if the pig had a pre-existing case of leprosy. So um, I knew that's not what I wanted to go with. That leaves us with option number three, the CZ Custom Trigger Pad, which I bought. And I cannot overstate how much of an improvement it is over the factory trigger. Partially because the factory trigger sucks such huge balls that anything is better. And then this is actually a legitimately a good trigger. And so the delta from factory trigger to where we're at is so huge. Um, I really do like this trigger. It is a massive improvement with an equally massive caveat. If you buy the custom shop trigger and you breeze past the part that says, and I quote, requires fitting, gunsmith installation recommended, you are in for a fucked up afternoon. It doesn't say might require adjustment, may require tinkering, you might want to consult a gunsmith. It says requires fitting, and they mean requires. If you do not fit it, and by fit it, I mean fucking file it, your safety will not work. Period. Or at least mine didn't. I couldn't get my safety engaged. Which, hey, maybe you're into that. You know what? Come to think of it, I'm kind of into that. Fuck safeties. Viva la revolution! So what do you get with a custom shop trigger? Well, you get a custom shop curved aluminum trigger mounted to a custom shop sear with a custom shop hammer and a reduced weight trigger spring. Uh, so that should just be it. And you drop it in Bob's your uncle. Uh, if Bob were the kind of uncle that takes your money and tries to touch your butthole. Happy Thanksgiving. These parts don't just drop in like they would if you'd gotten an AR trigger pack. So all these components uh, are loose and then need to be fitted inside this bent steel cage that the trigger pack resides. So you've got some uh, cross-drilled holes where you've got some pins that locate all these components. And then those cross-drilled holes are actually in this little U-shaped steel cage. Um, and I'm guessing because it's just a bent sheet metal cage, the tolerances probably aren't as tight as they could be. A lot of people kind of compared it to an AR trigger, or excuse me, AK trigger group. I don't really know that much about AK, so I'll take your word for it. Suffice to say, they left a shitload of material on this little pad that you need to file down so that your safety rides on it. Uh, if you take too much material off, I don't think your safety will work, meaning that if the gun is in safe, you can actually pull the trigger. Uh, and if you don't take any material off, then you physically can't get your gun from fire into safe mode. So there's a sweet spot. I don't know how much of a sweet spot it is, but I was taking this shit off like five thousandths at a time. And it took me all day long. I'll roll in some footage of me with a little bitty file. Just file, reassemble, fit, take it apart, file, reassemble, fit, test it, take it apart, file on it. And it was a gigantic pain in the ass. How does a custom shop trigger feel? It feels great. It is so much better. It feels really, really good. There's a little bit of take up, then you have a very pronounced wall. There is no creep that I can tell. I've got mine tuned to where there's basically no over travel and the reset is pretty short. Um, so all of that is fantastic. Having said that, the lighter trigger spring that it came with also lightens the reset force. Uh, and I probably need to stone the underside of the disconnector. Um, but I, I ran into a couple situations where I would basically take all of the weight off the trigger before it would click forward into reset. It's not pushing my trigger finger forward at all. Uh, and so if you want to run it really fast, it helps to have some of that force pushing forward. Uh, so I can actually run it way faster with the factory weight trigger spring in there. Um, but obviously having that shorter take up, more pronounced wall, no over travel and shorter reset really help in running it fast. Uh, and also make sure that when you take that out, you're going to want to lock tight that screw that holds that trigger group in there because mine actually backed off like a turn <clears throat> or two. One five splits is about as quick as I could go for anything longer than a simple double tap. Uh, and this was regardless of whether I had the lighter weight or full power spring in there. The big difference was running the lightweight spring gave me a lot of trigger freeze issues. And this was because I wasn't getting my finger off the trigger enough for it to fully reset. Running the higher power trigger spring always made sure I had reset. I wasn't running it 
any faster necessarily, but I didn't have the trigger freeze issue that I did with the lighter power spring. And just as a point of reference, it's significantly easier for me to shoot my AR fast. Partially because I think the SD3G that I have on there uh, is an easier trigger to shoot fast, but also just due to the fact that there's almost no recoil and I only have a moderately sized break. I think I'm running a VG6 Gamma on it. So after having said all that, would I recommend the CZ Custom Trigger? Uh, if you're a trigger snob and you know you're going to put a nice trigger on it and you don't mind spending 225 bucks on a trigger and an afternoon fitting the thing, go ahead and do it. Or you can send your trigger into them and they'll fit it for you. I think they've got a fitting fee, but I'm sure they do a bunch of fancy voodoo to it. Um, so if you want a really nice trigger on your Scorpion, you're willing to spend the money, go for it. I think currently it is the best trigger option out there. Having said that, if you want a really light trigger because you're like, oh, I'm gonna run this thing in competition, it's got a really light trigger on it, I would probably say that your limiting factor isn't going to be the trigger. It's probably gonna be the recoil impulse that it has because I've gotten it down to like consistently 0 0.14, 0 0.15 splits. And I, you know, I'm not the fastest person in the world by any means, but if I were to run it that fast or any faster, at that point in time, sites probably, depending on distance, probably aren't back on target yet. So I don't think that your limiting factor is going to be how quickly you can pull the trigger so much as is the hellacious two pound bolt that's clacking in the back of the receiver. All right, enough trigger stuff, on to other things. I really, really enjoy this gun, but there is one thing I didn't consider when I bought it, and that was the recoil system. So my advice to you, prospective squap and purchaser, is make sure you know exactly what you want to do with this gun before you end up buying it, because there are some inherent limitations in the recoil system that currently there aren't really any good ways to get around, and it's gonna make it a little more tough to do the competition-y things with it. Still a great gun, but there are just some limitations you should be aware of. If you're buying a PCC because you're planning on Ricky Bobby in it and competitions all day long, and therefore you need it to be relatively soft shooting, uh, then you need to do one of two things. Either one, uh, get a PCC that has an intrinsically soft recoiling system, like roller lock, something like that. Or two, get a potentially blowback PCC uh, that has a metric fuck ton of aftermarket support, like AR9s. It's straight blowback. Uh, there's nothing fancy about that recoil system, but it's got parts for days and people tweak them all the time. Most shooters are familiar with the two main types of recoil systems on ARs and AKs. So for an AR, you would have direct impingement. Uh, for an AK, you'd have gas piston. But the whole PCC slash PDW slash SMG world has got recoil systems all over the fucking place. You've got direct blowback, uh, you've got uh, gas piston, you've got roller lock, you've got radial delayed. You ain't even get with positive traction if you want to. Um, so it's really important to know what you're getting uh, and the potential drawbacks and benefits of those different systems. Blowback guns typically have the stoutest recoil with the shittiest recoil impulse. And it's not because the round is particularly powerful, it's because they've got a 900 pound bolt clacking back into the back of the receiver. I actually have, I've actually got a Scorpion bolt right here. Oh, oh wait, this is actually much, much lighter than the bolt on the Scorpion. Burn. On ARs and AKs, you have the option of adjusting the gas system. So you have an adjustable gas block on an AR or an adjustable gas piston on an AK, assuming that you buy that part or that gun comes with that part. Uh, but direct blowback guns don't have that option. There is no gas system to tune. So you're stuck with what you got. Let's take blowback AR9s as an example. There is no gas system like we talked about, but you can still change the bolt weight, you can change the spring force, you can change the buffer weight, you could add a hydraulic buffer, you could get us some fake boobs. Um, you've got a lot of options out there. So what are the options on a Scorpion, you may be asking. You ain't got no goddamn options. There's nothing. You, there is no aftermarket parts for the Scorpion that touch or affect the recoil system as of this date. And if there are, and I missed it, somebody please correct me because I will happily buy a hydraulic buffer for the CZ Scorpion if it exists. If you're new to shooting and you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, let's play with a car analogy. An AR is a car that you are allowed to change every single part on, everything cosmetically, as well as engine, transmission, you know, wheels, tires, whatever you want to, the whole shebang. Uh, a Scorpion is a car that you are allowed to buy flame stickers in the checkout line of an AutoZone. That's it.
That's all you got. And fuzzy dice. Flame stickers and fuzzy dice. That's a wrap.